uh, the mean value theorem is going to help us uh, pinpoint some things about the shapes of the graph, and that's where we're heading uh, next. So um, it starts out with something called Rolle's theorem, and then from Rolle's theorem, it goes to the mean value theorem. So that's where we're uh, heading today. So first, let's talk about Rawls' theorem. What Rawls' theorem basically says is if we have this continuous function where the ends match, continuous function where the ends are at the same height, continuous function where the ends are at the same height, there must be a spot we'll call C where f of C is a uh, slope of the tangent that is equal to zero. So it says that if we have a continuous function from A to B, it's differentiable between A and B, so there's no uh, pointy points or gaps or jumps. And if the endpoints match, there must be a derivative equal to zero in between. There's somewhere, there's at least one place between A and B where the derivative equals zero. Now that doesn't always work if there is a problem in the function, like an absolute value has a point in it. Um, those could cause issue with this theorem. So that's why we have to have a continuous perfect curve as we go through the function. So you'll notice perfect curve, perfect curve, no pointy points, no, no problems with differentiability, nothing weird, okay? When the endpoints match, there has to be a zero somewhere between those two things. Now, why would that be? Well, that means because if we start one place, we know we're going to get back to the same height, and it's a continuous function. We had to loop back around. So there has to be a spot that is either a high point or a low point. You know, we could, it, it doesn't guarantee there's only one. There might have multiple. It says there's at least one spot in there that the derivative equals zero. So is this going to help with? So we were looking at the extremity of the thing that has that like slight curve that doesn't count as term. Is this going to help with that? Um, it's going, in a way. So what we're going to do, we're going to, the Rawls theorem and the mean value theorem will help us pinpoint some uh, specific locations on the graph. And then we're going to use that with some things we know about increase and decrease in maxes and mins. That we're going to kind of put it together as far as the graph goes, I think, in the next section. So let's use Rawls' theorem to find 1c in the given interval where the derivative equals 0. So the first thing you have to figure out is, does it fit Rawls? So A, the first thing you ask yourself, is it continuous from negative 2 to 0? Well, our first one is a parabola. It's continuous everywhere. So yeah, check mark, got first thing. Second thing you want to check, do the endpoints match? Are they both at the same height? Well, if you plug in negative 2, you get 4 minus 4, or 0. If you plug in 0, you get 0 plus 0, which is 0. They match. OK, so, so it has to be continuous. They have to match. then we can find C. Well, we know that there's somewhere in that interval where the derivative, first derivative equals zero. So let's find the first derivative, 2x plus 2. Solve where is it equal to zero. Now you might get multiple values. In this particular case, we only get one value. We get that at negative 1. So that's going to be our answer. The first derivative equals 0 at negative 1, so c equals negative 1. 
Sometimes you'll get multiple answers, and maybe one answer will be in the interval and one answer will be outside the interval. you got to pick one that's inside the interval. Okay, so let's do B. Is it continuous on the interval from negative 2 to 2? Well, sure, it's a cubic. Are the endpoints matching? Well, if you stick negative 2 in, you get negative 8 plus 8 or 0. If you stick positive 2 in, you get 8 minus 8, which is 0. They match. And they don't have to equal 0. In these cases, they do. They just have to match. They just have to match. So now we are able to find C. So we're going to take the derivative. We're going to set it equal to 0. Well, we're going to solve it. And then we're going to set it equal to 0. So the derivative is 3x squared minus 4. So let's set that equal to 0. Now, to solve it for uh, 0, this one, you can try to factor it. I'm just going to solve for the x. Uh, let's move 4 to the other side. Let's divide by 3. And so x is plus or minus the square root of 4 fifths. Now be careful. Sometimes one of them is in the interval and one of them is not. Okay, so you know let's make that a little prettier. So technically, um, that would be plus or minus two over radical three, or plus or minus two radical three over three. Now the decimal value of that is about. It's approximately. 1.15. Now we need to know that because we need to know are those in the interval. So is positive 1.15 in the interval? Yes. So C could equal the positive square root of 2, no, I'm sorry, 2 square root of 3 over 3. Is negative 1.15 in the interval? Yes. So, you know, sometimes the answer you get, one thing works, one thing doesn't. You know, it just kind of depends upon the equation that they have given you. But in this case, uh, both of them are. And then if you were to put that into Desmos, let me show you. Let me show you how to put kind of an interval into Desmos, just so you know. So if you put in the x cubed minus 4x, the original function, and then we're going to put a restriction. Now, to restrict it between negative 2 and 2, you're going to put a bracket. And then you're going to put uh, uh, negative 2 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 2. Now, look at our function. If you go and you zoom in here and you look at the peaks and valleys, what did I say? That's that negative 1.15 is in there negative uh, or positive 1.15 is in there. So sometimes, you know, if they would have said the interval from um, 0 to 2, uh, you would only have the positive one, not the negative one. So watch where they uh, put the intervals. Any questions about Rawls theorem? Okay. So now let's talk about what is, how is the mean value theorem different? Well, you still have to have a continuous function between a and b. Differentiable on a to b, they don't include the endpoints because if you truncate it between a and b, there's no left side differentiability and right, you know, because it stops. But here, all it says is that there must be a c this time that is the, um, where the derivative equals the slope connecting a and b where the derivative is the slope connecting a and b. So if you connected a and b and found the slope, there has to be a spot somewhere that the uh, derivative, the slope of the tangent, will equal that value. And, and let's, let's look at why. Let's pinpoint, let's look at this graph, okay? So if we connect the two, two ends, that is the slope between those two. 
And couldn't you picture, if you pick this line up, that there's a slope of a tangent, I'd say about right there. Wait, I can't, I'm sorry, I didn't do it the right way. But isn't about right there? That would be your point, that the slope is equal. There's another one, I think, probably, right, right about here, maybe, where the slope of the tangent line is equal to the slope between the two endpoints. So that's what that's saying. So the mean value theorem just says that there is a C somewhere uh, between those two A and B values where uh, we match the slope between the two endpoints. So where the derivative, the slope of the tangent, meets the slope between the two endpoints. You might recall from what we have learned uh, in, um, in trigonometry and then when we talked about slopes of lines this year, this is the slope of the secant between A and B, and this is just a, a tangent line slope somewhere in there. So it says here, show that for uh, f of x equals square root of x on the interval from 0 to 9, that it satisfies the mean value theorem, and that we want to find some c that exists between 0 and 9, where the slope of the tangent equals the slope between the endpoints. So this is what I think about. Okay, so the square root, we know at 0, we're at 0 at 1, we're at 1, at 9, we are at 3. So we're talking about just this section of our square root. So we know that f of 0 is 0 f of 9 is 3. And we also know that um, it is continuous on the interval um, from 0 to 9. And it's a perfect continuous curve. There's no pointy points, there's no gaps, there's no breaks between 0 and 9. Because they, it is continuous and differentiable from 0 to 9, um, then we know that there must exist. We need to find C where F prime of C equals the slope between the two points. So we're talking about this slope. So what is that slope? Well, the slope between uh, 0 and 9, we're just going to use these points right here, so it will be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So it would be 3 minus 0 over 9 minus 0 or 1 third. So somewhere between 0 and 9, we can find a place where the first derivative equals 1 third. So let's take the first derivative. The first derivative is 1 half x to the negative 1 half. And we want to find where does that equal one third. That's really what we're looking for. Well, rewrite that. And I'm sorry, that's a two. I got stuck on the one third thing. Um, so it, I would probably rewrite that like this, so that we can easily see that it is uh, a proportion that we can just cross multiply. So we get 3 equals 2 square root of x. Divide by 2, we get 3 halves equals square root of x. What's going to get rid of our square root? Square root. Yeah, just square everything. And so we get x equals 9 fourths. 9 fourths is 2.25. 
Is 2.25 between 0 and 9? Sure, yeah. So we would say that our C is uh, 9 fourths. So there exists a value somewhere between 0 and 9 where the slope of the uh, line connecting the ends uh, and the slope of the tangent are equal. So if you, if you look in Desmos, let me kind of show you what you could look for in Desmos in the graph. So if you put in your square root, and I'll restrict it just so we can pinpoint. So uh, 0 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 9. So you'll notice that it only goes to 9. And then let's look at the slope between those two points. Now it makes me think, uh, so that would be uh, y minus 9 equal, no, y minus 3 equals, what was the slope? One third? One third of x minus 9. So see the line there? Let's make it dash. So it's a little easier. Okay. And then let's look at the line that passes through uh, the point at 9 fourths. So what would that equation be? Oh my gosh. Um, well, I don't know, but let's point, pinpoint that point. X equals 9 fourths. So think about if we took the green line and we went through that point right here. If you went through that point, you can see that see how the tangent line would just skim across it and have the same exact slope as that. So, so that's kind of what you're looking for. Okay, so let's talk about how this can help us in a physics application. So in this example, it says if a rock is dropped from a height of 100 feet, its position is given by that S of T equation. So that's the position function. Determine how long it takes to hit the ground. Find the average velocity. Um, and find the time that the mean value theorem uh, says that the instantaneous velocity is equal to the average. So let's remember some things that we know. So uh, if the position function is negative 16, t squared plus 100, and they've asked us to find the, uh, where does um, uh, it hit the ground, that would mean a position of zero. So where is the position equal to zero? So if you go zero equals negative 16 t squared plus 100, subtract 100, Divide off the negative 16. Uh, let's think here. I'm just going to leave it that for now. Um, I'll take the negative down here. And then to take uh, to find t, it's going to be plus or minus the square root of 100 over 16. Now, plus or minus for time is irrelevant because we only are going to go forward in time from the starting point. So that would be 10 fourths, the positive, and that would be seconds, which is the same as 5 halves. So at 5 halves of the second, uh, or 2.5 seconds, we hit the ground, okay, after we drop it. Now the next part asks us to find the average velocity. So um, if you think about the velocity equation, well, there's a few different ways to do it. Um, uh, we can, average velocity is just the slope of the tangent line. So this means the slope of, I'm sorry, average velocity is just the slope. And so if we look at uh, S of 
0, the starting place, we get 100. And S of uh, the final value, 5 halves, I don't know what that is, 16, negative 16 times 5 halves squared plus 100. What is that? Oh, it's a number. Let's do it here. Okay. 5 squared. Five half squared twenty-five over four. Five six divided four is four times twenty-five. Well, zero. Is it zero then? What? Because you get negative one hundred plus one hundred. Yeah. Yeah. So it would be zero, wouldn't it? Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So now we have two points, so we can find the slope. So this is the point zero one hundred. This is the point five halves zero. And so the average velocity. is just the position at two points, and it's just the slope between those two points. So let's go um, uh, 0 minus 100 over 5 halves minus 0. So what is that? Negative 100 over 5 halves, which is 200 divided by 5, which is 40, but negative. And that's going to be feet, and then uh, the, that's the x's and the y's were seconds, so that's going to be feet per second. So that's the slope between the two ends, when we start and when we hit the ground. Now, in part c says, by the, uh, the, the mean value theorem, when will the instantaneous velocity, slope of our tangent, equal the average velocity. So we're looking for, let's make these negative, so I have the mean plus the mean negative. So we're really looking for now, okay, so that was A, that was B, okay. Now C, then we're looking for when will the first derivative equal negative B. So let's take the first derivative, our velocity. Um, so our velocity equation is going to be negative 32t uh, plus 0, which is negative 32t. So when will negative 32t equal negative 40? Divide both sides by negative 32. And then two negatives make a positive. Uh, the top is divisible by 8. The bottom is divisible by 8. So at 5 fourths of a second, we know that the slope of the uh, tangent is the same as the slope between the two ends. So there's kind of one that has a little more of an application to it. And then this is your assignment, 153 to 179 odds. So you're going to have time to work on it now and to work on it uh, tomorrow as well.